Well, hello everyone, it's me, it's Hawk, and welcome back to another video. I would like to talk about a mushroom that's really helped me, and I just want to info dump on you guys about Amanita muscaria and Amanita pantherina. Note that this is not medical advice. Likewise, this is not federally restricted in the United States of America. This is also not psilocybin. I am saying that very specifically for YouTube censorship. This mushroom contains ibotenic acid and muscimol. No psilocybin. Both mushrooms contain ibotenic acid and muscimol and no psilocybin. I'm just saying that so YouTube doesn't, like, take down this video or restrict it. Because it's also true, but, like, YouTube can be a bit touchy on that. And I wanted to make sure it had the truth. So, let's take off the glasses so the glare isn't that bad. I'll be blind, but who cares? I'm sure I can get through this video blind as a bat. Okay? Okay. So what am I going to talk about? I want to info dump, as many autistic folks, including myself, tend to do on you guys, um, about the mushroom that has really helped me out, um, especially in regards to my sensory sensitivities and my misophonia, which coincides with my auditory sensitivities, which is a pain in the butt, but you know, that's life. Sometimes you get conditions you didn't ask for. But, uh, you know, um, misophonia is a pain in the butt, but Amanita muscaria helps me with that. Likewise, this helps with my anxiety and it helps with my internal chatterbox. If you can't tell, I did not have any today, so that might be why I'm a bit rambly, but I did have some yesterday of Pantherina, which is Amanita muscaria's more potent cousin. For those wondering, what is Amanita muscaria? I'll show you a picture right here. Um, Amanita muscaria is the red and white Mario mushroom. It, it looks like the Mario mushroom, to put it nicely. It looks like this. Now, you'll commonly see about this mushroom in field guides, and this is highly inaccurate, I'd say, by and large. This is a poisonous, deadly mushroom that you should stay the heck away from it unless you want your life to be over in 0.2 seconds. Not quite that, but they tell you pretty, um, pretty harshly to stay away from this mushroom that's poisonous and deadly and will kill everyone you know. You know what I'm saying? You, it doesn't say anything favorable about this mushroom in particular, but you know, if you've seen and if you've done your research into this mushroom, you would know that it's been used for hundreds if not thousands of years, especially in Northern and Eastern Europe in places like Siberia, um, by people as medicine and also just spiritually it's been used and there haven't been many reports of a bunch of people dropping dead. Why? Probably because if you prepare this mushroom right, if you decarboxylize it right, if you prepare it right, it's not raw, it's not a hot dose, you'll be okay. Generally speaking, you will be okay with this mushroom if you know what you're doing, you know what to prepare for, you know what potential side effects might happen, and if you prepare it correctly, and you don't hot dose yourself, don't take it like you might a psilocybin mushroom, this is completely different. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this mushroom contains zero psilocybin, but instead ibotenic acid and muscimol. Yeah, this mushroom isn't completely deadly. It's has It's been used for hundreds if not thousands of years is my main point that I'm trying to say. If you look at people over time using this, you would get to the conclusion that generally speaking, if, unless it's in, prepared improperly, as in raw, or it's hot dosed, people tend to be okay on this mushroom if they're not, like, doing this in the wrong time, place, setting, or for the wrong reasons, or the wrong preparation for their body, or whatever the case may be. As long as they're being, like, reasonable with this mushroom, and they're exercising caution, and, like, not trying to, like, shove a bunch of mushrooms in their mouth, they'll, they'll be okay. People will be fine. But I wanted to say that because a lot of people are scared of mushrooms and like mycophobia is a thing. I just wanted to dispel some of that for you. People have been using this mushroom and its more potent cousin, Pantherina, for hundreds if not thousands of years. Now granted, Muscaria is the more um, famous one, but Pantherina is, is, is a cousin to it. It's significantly more potent. So I will tell you, if you do have Amanita Pantherina, that it is more potent. As in, like, if you, what might be a threshold to micro, microdose to, like, threshold dose for Amanita muscaria will be, like, somewhere between a threshold dose and a standard psychoactive dose for Amanita pantherina. As in, yeah, Amanita pantherina is a significantly more potent. Still contains abitetic acid and muscular, which is what you're after, but it's just more potent. So I will say that 
as a warning to anyone wanting to try Pantherina that I personally think it's worth it based on my experience. You would have to determine that for yourself. I would I would advise you do your research. I have a book, not my book, but like not that famous, <laughs> but it's by Dr. Baba Basha. She has some interviews here on YouTube, I believe, in English for those who don't speak Russian. Um, but she has this book all about microdose and Amonia muscaria. I highly advise people read this book if they're at all interested in Amonia muscaria or Pantherina. I suggest you start with Amanita muscaria because it is less potent. You can get a better feel without hot dosing yourself necessarily right off the bat of how ibotenic acid and muscimol respectively impact you and your body and how it makes you feel and in what ways in certain doses how it makes you feel and then you can determine okay do i want to delve into its more potent cousin that is pantherina i highly advise that because if you don't um you could have some unpleasant symptoms <laughs> like if you don't know what you're in for if you don't do your research if you don't experiment with how it affects you personally and like of course don't take it with like certain medications i'm sure like reading this book would help but just if you are prepared and you've experienced a little bit of muscaria, I suggest microdosing it first. But if you've experienced that and you like how it makes you feel and you're willing to adve adventure into Pantherina, which is what's in this jar here, um, I say go ahead. Just be careful because again, like I said earlier in this video, what is a microdose, just standard threshold dose for muscaria, can be a standard threshold dose to standard psychoactive dose for Pantherina. So it's a bit more potent. You want to try Muscaria first. Now I bet you're wondering, Hawk, it's been like six minutes and 57 seconds uh, as of now of you just rambling on about this mushroom. How does it affect you? Why are you into it? I will read from my phone this Reddit post that I made. I just said I made it, but um, I want to read off this because this summarizes what I've experiences pretty, experienced pretty well um, without me rambling too much more than I usually do. So if you want a more like uh, articulated, well articulated version of what I experienced, listen to me read this Reddit post that I posted. So uh, this is why I said and I'm going to explain my experience with Amanita Muscaria to you guys, my general experience and also Mantharina. So, I am used to how Amanita muscaria affects me. I typically microdose it, microdose it only going to a threshold dose, uh, which is 2-3 grams, or a standard psychoactive dose, in my case 6 grams, occasionally as needed. I like how it lessens my sensory sensitivities. I am autistic, by the way, if you didn't catch on earlier. Um, it relieves my chronic pain and anxiety, and also helps me keep motivated and focused. I ran out of my Amanita muscaria and have been doing research into its more potent cousin, Amanita pantherina. And my reason for getting it is that it has ibotenic acid and muscimol, which is what I'm after, but in more potent amounts. So in theory, I'll need far less of it and it'll last me longer than Amanita muscaria. So I ordered 10 grams of ground up Amanita pantherina and received it on January 5th, 2024. On that same date, I decided to start with a gram. I used my electric kettle to put it at 131 degrees Fahrenheit, the max temp recommended in Baba Wash's book for Amanita Muscaria preparation, and let it step, steep in a tea bag like a disposable one for 15 minutes. Um, before drinking this tea, I did have really bad knee pain and a migraine. Roughly 25 to 30 minutes after taking, I stopped feeling pain in both areas. The one drawback I did experience was more sensitivity to heat or at least heavier sweats than usual. This is not unheard of with Amanita muscaria or Amanita pantherina, so I wasn't concerned. Plus, it wasn't too much um, in terms of the sweat. Then, my mood elevated and I felt a bit looser or less stiff emotionally in a good way. I felt less tense. And even the background music and YouTube videos made me feel like dancing, whereas they normally absolutely never do. In addition, my brain's constant chatterbox calmed down for a bit. I felt a strong, peaceful, and happy feeling akin to how one feels after exiting a deep or profound meditation. My intuition also felt heightened, 
and I found divination to be significantly easier. For those unaware, I am a witch and a pagan. I do divination as a part of my practice. But yes, it did heighten my intuitive abilities. And the next day, which is today, as of filming and likely posting this, um, the 6th of January 2024, I still feel calm. I hope this was a lasting effect, and I also feel more creative. I got a restorative sleep as well. Overall, my one gram of Amanita Pantherina felt very pleasant. I haven't had any unpleasant symptoms of note, aside from the more sweats than usual. Nothing concerning, though. I experienced a great calm and peace, creativity, motivation, focus, intuitive enhancement, pain relief, and a greater sense of happiness emotionally. I felt a lot happier while on this mushroom than I have in a long time without. So I hope that made sense to you all. Um, this mushroom has been extremely helpful for me personally in terms of managing chronic pain. It also helps me manage my depression. Now that, talk to your psychiatrist about, talk to your doctor about. My psychiatrist personally weaned me off Lexapro because ibotenic acid works on your glutamate channels, which could potentially raise serotonin and also was on way too high of Lexapro at the time, like 30 milligrams, which is 10 milligrams higher than the healthy max dose for your average adult. So that being said, um, I was taken eventually off Lexapro and I will say, although the withdrawals from Lexapro are no joke, I believe Amanita Muscario seriously helped me with those withdrawals, through those withdrawals, and like, they weren't as severe as they were during the times when I didn't have Amanita Muscaria in my system and was withdrawing. Like, when I had it in my system, the withdrawals were far less severe. So, that I, I credit to the Amanita, like, and also my depression has pretty much been at bay for the most part since, like, microdosing Amanita, so... Like, again, this is not medical advice, I'm just saying my experience. Personally, my psychiatrist found it necessary to take me off the Lexapro, and I don't blame her. Like, I think she made the right decision because I've been a lot better for it um, since being off Lexapro. I've been a lot better for it. So, you know, that's just my experience. Um, obviously, talk to your doctor, and I suggest perhaps getting a book like this when you talk to your doctor because... They might freak out and when they look it up and go, oh, you're taking a hallucinogenic mushroom. Only in set, like, sci higher psychoactive doses. If you're microdosing it, you're not hallucinating. Unless you're, like, especially sensitive. Like, you're not gonna hallucinate. Not even gonna have particularly funky dreams. You're just gonna, you know, you're gonna exist in a most likely better state of feeling. When I, if that makes any sense. Obviously, how it impacts you personally is going to definitely be dependent on you and your biochemistry your own personal needs and conditions but like most likely you will be better for it if this book of from dr baba masha has anything to go off of but you know i think this mushroom is pretty great or these mushrooms um i should say not just this mushroom but both mushrooms of muscaria and pantherina have been very 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 helpful like i am only motivated to do this video right now rambling to you guys because of I believe Pantherina because honestly I don't like doing long form content that often and it's still a chore and pain in the butt to do short form like I want to interact with you guys and build a community I just have low motivation I really it's I am fighting myself most of the time and this mushroom helps me fight myself less and actually be a bit more productive which is why I really like it among other reasons it also helps with my period pain significantly, which is significant for me because I have two uteruses and endometriosis. Yeah, uh, that hurts. And this mushroom helps with that pain. So it's like, woohoo, I'm all happy about that. So pain meds don't usually touch it, but this mushroom does. So I'm pretty happy about that. I can't say it'll help for everyone, but it certainly helps me. Um, so with that being said, I hope this video wasn't too awkward. I just wanted to share with you my experience with Amanita Muscaria and Pantherina in hopes that this will be uh, somewhat educational or informative for y'all. So with that being said, this is Hawk signing out. Thank you for coming along with me on this part of my journey.